Okay, in this video we're up in my ham shack and uh, what we're going to do is take a look at how to use WWV, you know, the standard time broadcast signal, as a reference source for calibrating things like you know, maybe your frequency counter or a signal generator and actually you can use it to even calibrate the dial on your receiver but we're going to focus more on the, the test equipment application. Uh, WWV um, you know, it transmits on a number of different frequencies, 5 MHz, 10 MHz, 15 MHz among them. 10 MHz is of particular interest because it's often used as a reference frequency for things like frequency counters and signal generators and things like that, so it's a good reference point. Now, of course, the WWV carrier is going to be you know, at 10 MHz to a better accuracy than, than most of us are going to have you know, uh, in a lab in terms of a standard, unless you've got a GPS trained standard or something like that, or a rubidium standard. So it's a convenient uh, you know, signal that we can use as a uh, frequency reference. Uh, and all we're going to do is uh, basically compare uh, the WWV carrier signal to our test signal, whatever it might be. It might be from a signal generator. In our case here, we're going to be looking at the reference output of this old leader uh, frequency counter. It happens to use a 10 megahertz reference. So uh, the real trick is, is you know, how do we compare the two? The principle we're going to use is just beating them together. Uh, something called zero beat, pretty common to the amateur radio operators, but uh, not maybe for the rest of you folks. So really what we're doing is, let's say our test signal is at or very near 10 megahertz, and then the WWV signal is at 10 megahertz. Um, so there might be a slight phase shift between them, and also if there's a frequency difference, one of these signals would appear to essentially walk very slowly from one you know, to the next. For example, if they were off by one hertz, you know, this peak would walk from, say, that peak over to this peak once a second. If we were off by two hertz, it would walk, you know, it would slip two cycles a second, etc. If you're off by less than, you know, one hertz, then we're going to slip by less than one cycle per second. And that it's got, you know, the reason we call this beating is because if the signals were perfect in terms of their phase alignment and their frequency, you know, we can essentially go through and add these up, and depending on how close they are in terms of that peak with respect to this one in time, is going to determine that the, the sum of those is going to get very big. Now, if we slip 180 degrees, okay, where this peak is lined up with this trough and vice versa, you essentially could reach a point in theory where you would completely cancel each other out and go to zero. So what happens if you're very, very close in frequency and you're just slipping, you know, a couple of cycles a second type of thing, you're going to get this beating effect. The sum of these signals is going to add and then, you know, what we call constructively add and then destructively uh, add. So you'll get a, a resulting signal that's going to kind of beat, okay? And the repetition frequency of that beating of the amplitude is equal to the frequency difference between the two. So the idea is you want to adjust your test signal to minimize that beat or get to what we call zero beat. Okay. And the receiver is actually a convenient way of actually uh, looking at that because the receiver we can use to receive, say, WWV at 10 megahertz. Okay. And we can use the signal strength or S meter uh, reading to uh, kind of measure how strong that signal is. So really the only trick is how to couple in our test signal into the antenna port along with the WWV signal we're getting and then we'll just look for the beat and actually can even hear it too. Okay, So, um, so let's actually go show, take a look at how to do that. So I'm tuned to WWV. This old Kenwood TS830 doesn't have an AM mode but we'll certainly receive this signal in single sideband. If I turn the volume up we'll hear it. So there's the familiar ticks of a WWV signal. Okay, Now what I like to do because it's a lot easier to listen to especially since we don't have a carrier to look at, is I like tuning, let me turn the volume down, I like tuning the frequency up. I'll go to lower sideband here. If I tune the frequency up by, say, 500 hertz, okay, now what's going to happen is the carrier is going to be uh, kind of a heterodyne in the receiver, and we'll hear a 500 hertz tone. Hear that 500 hertz tone. That's actually the carrier. You'll notice as I tune, I could make the carrier go away, you know, type of thing, but... So let's go, let's go up to 500 hertz and listen to the, the carrier tone. So there it is. So now we've got something that we use as a reference okay, to beat against. Okay. So let's take a look at um, the counter here. Okay. On the back of the counter, just flip this thing around. Okay. I can see I've got a 
frequency standard output, okay, ground and, and output, 10 megahertz, and I've got an adjustment here. So all I need to do is really couple this output um, to somehow couple it into my antenna. So I've actually got a wire uh, sitting here uh, that we're going to uh, do that with. Okay, but before I do that, I'm also, I've also got a, a really nice frequency counter here. I've got this uh, Tektronix, it's kind of blocked that out there, Tektronix uh, FCA 3003. Okay, and I've got a, a line that will couple that into uh, the output of the counter here. And we can take a look, and I can actually see that I've got this thing set. It's only two hertz off out of 10 megahertz, which is actually pretty good. Okay, um, so it's only uh, that's that's 0.2 ppm uh, off. So it's actually not that far off, but that means it's two hertz. So I'll actually be able to hear a beat. So if I take this little blue wire, kind of like an antenna, and stick it in here, and now if I look at the meter, I can actually see that beating back and forth at two hertz, right? because we're getting this walking you know two times a second as we're going through that so I can actually see the beating going on there so really what we want to do uh, to adjust that is take you know our little diddle stick here again you want to use something non-metallic and go into uh, the adjustment here and if I kind of hold this over here at the camera or at the S meter and see if I can adjust this ever so slightly okay and now I get to the point where I'm barely moving. You see it's beating well less than once a second. Now if I look over here at the frequency counter, I can see I'm less than less than one hertz off. I'm about a half a about a half a half a cycle per second off or one half hertz off. And you can see this is beating about to once every two seconds. That beat is kind of moving back and forth. It's kind of unstable because WWV isn't coming in here real strong. But that's pretty darn close. That is, once I get at 10 megahertz, once I get below 1 hertz, that's below 0 0.1 parts per million. Okay, so I'm at about uh, uh, 0.05 ppm, uh, which is uh, pretty darn good for uh, this old uh, frequency counter with the Nixie tubes. But uh, that's how you basically use uh, WWV to zero beat. Now let's say you didn't have a frequency reference at 10 megahertz here, but you want to check the accuracy of your counter. Uh, well, what you could do is simply take a signal generator, okay, and zero beat your signal generator to 10 megahertz, okay, like we did here. Just couple it into the air, uh, couple it in so it, it mixes in with uh, your received signal, and then zero beat it. So now you know your signal generator is at 10 megahertz, and then you can couple that into the uh, your frequency counter and adjust whatever references you've got on the frequency counter until it reads exactly 10 megahertz. Uh, so that's a, a you know quick demonstration of how you might use uh, an off-the-air signal as a frequency standard to uh, to make a quick and dirty uh, calibration adjustment on some of your equipment that might use a, say a 10 megahertz reference.